everybody welcome back if you are a returning viewer and hello and a big warm welcome if you are new here um, I would like to start out by saying thank you to everybody who has left comments and liked videos and even the ones that just came by just to view um, thank you so much I really appreciate that um, I'm Melissa this is gonna be my knitting channel um, special guest again is my mom <laughs> Um, sadly, today is going to be her last day visiting us. She'll be leaving tomorrow morning, so definitely leave her a comment down below if you'd like to say goodbye, and <laughs> next time when she comes to visit, she'll definitely be on the podcast again. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping this will be a slightly shorter video because we do have some kind of last minute things to do in town before they leave that we wanted to do together. Um, so yeah, um... I guess we can start off with some finished um, objects real quick. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming in and yeah, let's get going. Alrighty, I have one finished object. Um, I don't know what happened with a lot of my it's whips. Been busy. <laughs> been busy yes. and I've just been on a roller coaster of emotions um, I'm not gonna get too <laughs> into my mental health issues and stuff but it's just it's been a roller coaster for me and anyway so I did not get a ton done but I did work on the things that were bringing me joy to help me through some of those things and anyway me and my mom, we went to Hobby Lobby because when I finished oh, Callie's yes. shawl <laughs> that I showed last week, I was like, oh, you've got to make one for Lauren, my sister. Yeah. Um, and anyway, when we were there, I told myself I would not buy yarn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Don't we all say that? <laughs> I went in with good intentions, That's right? Don't we all say, yes. <laughs> well, I bought yarn. So anyway... <laughs> It was my fault. I bought... I, yeah, it wasn't. Because I picked it up first. No, I, I picked it up first. It wasn't. <laughs> but you were just... You were just admiring. Oh, yes, I was. <laughs> anyway. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, goodness. But anyway, she got the yarn for Lauren's shawl because I kind of talked her into that. Yes. Because she was worried she wouldn't have room in her car when her and my dad left. I told her mom, you're so fast at knitting, you're going to finish that before you yep. leave. Yep. And in this next, someone we'll obviously it. finished something. <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing I finished, <laughs> I guess I should show the project. So I made a little crocheted dishcloth. <laughs> It's but so cute, though. It's just a basic linen stitch um, in crochet, same as what my... Um, temperature blanket is made out of um but yeah this is unused i haven't gotten to use it yet it's just been rolled up i don't it's even so know if the colors are fully coming up but it, it, it it's like so it cool like i love how the band of colors kind of crisscrosses if y'all can kind of see that let that me know cool. um but i think it is oh, so it does neat kind of crisscross yeah. i didn't notice that yeah and that's on, cool on camera it's showing up like because it is an orange yarn but there is turquoise blue in here but it's coming up more like green, yeah. I guess. But it's just this Crafter's Secret cotton. It's from Hobby Lobby. I think the price is right there. I don't know. I can't see it. There we go. It's two twenty nine. Um, I don't know if this was on sale when we went. I think it I was. Don't. Was it? I was gonna say because I don't think I, the yarn was on sale. I think though, when but we no, went in. I think when we went in, it was still their thirty percent off all the yarn. Yeah. The second time we went in to oh, get that's the right, that's for right. your blanket, yes. then it wasn't. Then it wasn't. Yep. But the cool thing is, is that this one is made with um, U.S. Um, fibers, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, just hundred percent cotton. I absolutely love it. I got two because I could not remember my ca or chain on. I should say not cast on. But I couldn't remember how many I chained on for all my other ones that I have. Because I have just like a white, a brown, and a red. But anyway, I thought this one would be a nice one to add to the collection. Yeah. Which I think I believe I chained on 43 stitches. And I just continued for the same amount of rows 
to make a square. So pretty much just go until you can fold it in half. Mm -hmm. And then once it makes a triangle, you're good to go. And I did add a border. I always add a, like a little border to these. Yeah, makes them look finished. But now I can make another one. I may make this one and send it to her. It's kind um, of a pumpkin color. That way we, yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty. Like, I just, I love it. But yeah, that That's way I pretty. can make another one yeah. and send it to you. That way we each have one. Yeah, those are cute. But anyway, that's my only finished project. Um, now it's your turn. Ta da! -da. <laughs> okay, so her little sister decided she needed a, a shawl also. So Melissa talked me into making it, and it actually turned out really good. It's so pretty. It's a little tiny bit wonky right here at the neck, but yeah. that's just my my chain I make. So I should have made it a little bit longer. But anyway. It's got the grays, the greens, and then a black along the edging with the gold mixed in there. I think it's beautiful. So. Well, and this is inspired from the Seattle Storm Women's yes. um, Professional Basketball League. Um, my sister is avid watcher. She loves going to the games. Um, Season ticket so, holders. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think it's so it'll awesome. be really nice on chilly oh. days. And she also did a Pico edging on hers. Oh, yes. And so hers is slightly different than mine. Yes, I did a two and two. She did or a, a three and two. A three and two. So yeah. hers is a little bit more prominent than mine. Yeah. I think it's really pretty. It almost looks like little little mountains. Oh, it feels nice. Like I wish y'all could feel that. If you're a tactile person, I'm very tactile about like how I feel things. I have to like the feeling. But that feels really nice. Yeah, so this was a chain three, a slip stitch into the same stitch, mm -hmm. and then I would slip stitch, slip stitch two, and then chain three again. Yeah. So a three and two. A three and two. Yep. I think it's beautiful. But anyway, and it really was quick to make. I made it in probably about a week. Something like that. I'd I say about a week. week. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, even my mom. Like, but I with, crochet fast. Yeah. And you even noticed with this pattern, it is free. Um, mm -hmm. I have shared um, a link to the PDF. I believe in the very first episode I showed the shawl, I will try and put the PDF link down below as well as everything else. I should say that now. Everything discussed, like yarns, things like that, where we got the yarns anyway, we'll put everything down below. That way, if y'all are interested in like, you know, checking any of that out, it's there for you. Um, I feel like I, I like neglect to say that. Area. I do too. Just so it's they can fun. see the ruffle area. Because this part here actually ruffles when you do it. It kind of sticks out. Yeah, so it's, it's really cool. Yeah, so it's not like a I chevron. Like it, it kind of ruffles. does like a wavy bit. Yeah. But you being an avid crocheter, like she's very good at crochet. You even had a little bit of like... I don't know if confusion is the right word for with the pattern, mm -hmm. but like the pattern, even though it's free, it was a little rough around the edges of like comprehending for me anyway of like what they wanted yeah, I me didn't, to do. I didn't like the the ruffle at first. I thought it yeah. should have laid flat and I was afraid I was doing it wrong. Yeah, I, so. I did the same thing and then I feel like the moment you get through this entire first gray area, you have it all in your head to finish it because oh, it's yeah. just the same thing over and over again. And I did manage to get through the whole thing with one skein per color. I don't know yeah. how. I don't know how either. I don't know how. <laughs> but you know And I, I'm a loose loose crocheter. Yeah. I mean very loose. Well you know what I've been hearing from other podcasters is that not all skeins are like the exact weight. Right. So like if you bought one that says it's a hundred grams, sometimes I've heard a lady say that she only had 80 grams no oh, and it was like hanged up and she got it home and weighed it and that's stuff and it was only difference. that's 20 that's, grams yeah. so i wonder even with commercial yarns i didn't weigh mine but that's i like wonder one -fifth. if that's if that's why yeah that's but, 20 percent of it isn't there yeah. right yeah that's crazy so i i don't know anyway it's so okay. beautiful y'all definitely give it a go it is a fun Yes, Shawl. I would say it's addicting because literally I finished the one for Callie and I'll try and put up a couple photos oh, yes. of her in it. Yes. Oh my god. So she precious. just looks so beautiful. Of course she looks like a little oh supermodel anyway. Oh my god. But 
I will put that up there, but I literally finished hers and wanted to start another one. I think that's why I peer pressured my mom <laughs> into making one. But anyway, is there anything else you wanted to say about it before we move on? Just, I think I need to make another one. I don't know what colors. <laughs> I, want to I don't know what colors, but I do need to make another one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. It's a really it's good in between like if you have a long project. I don't can't think of my lot. Oh well it, it's it gives you a really good yeah. quick project that gets done quick. So yeah. I think so. Yeah. It's fun to do. Or if it's you're quick. um used to just crocheting simple things like me, like literally just dishcloths, this would be something <laughs> fun to try. That way you kinda get some different techniques down. Well, That's I how I really saw crocheted it. in years. But you Finish this way faster. It's because of that freaking temperature blankets. It's beautiful. I know. It kicked, started. Yes. We're addicted to crochet right now. Like, I cannot tell you how much I love it right now. And everybody's getting into it. I've seen so and many podcasters. People. Yes. I'm shocked. Like, I just saw someone showing how it. they want to make um, crocheted cardigans. Like, so yep. many people. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of cool. And I hadn't it, heard of crochet in a long time. I know. Everybody was knitting. Knit, I think knit. it's because a lot of 60s and 70s styles are coming back into fashion. Yeah, that's probably true. And so you see true. it in fashion yes. of like these, you know, crocheted vests and stuff. And then yep. the designs become more popular. It's an endless yep. cycle with fashion. Especially with granny squares. Oh my God, I want to do one. So like the bad. grocery girls yeah. and their bag. Oh my God, I want to do their that bag. bag. Is so I want to do cute. that bag. And they mentioned something about like how they could get like a rod, or did you mention that to me? Oh no, I did. Okay, because on Jody's bag, if you watch the Grocery Girls latest video, um, Jody has one of those little wooden handles on her bag, and she mentioned how she you could always get a rod, a dowel yeah. to put on each side to kind of give it some more structure up at the Along top. The edges. And I was thinking, how cute would it be, especially you're going back mm -hmm. to the Northwest to get driftwood off the beach oh, and yeah. sand it down so and have cute. that be like your handles, and then you could then attach some handles to it so it's a more structured basket. Um, that was a cute or little bag, though. I want to make one. one. I may was, make one. If I do, yeah. then I'll definitely share, share it. Share it. Yeah. But anyway. Because it was only six granny squares yeah. per side, I think. I think so. And then there was that center was and bottom attachment. I'll try and put yeah. a photo up, but if I'm not able to, just look down below. Their podcast will be linked there. If you haven't seen it already. Right. I'm sure if you're watching mine, you've seen theirs. But <laughs> if not... <laughs> If not, it's down below. You should definitely check it out. Um, I love them. Oh my God, they're so funny. But they're anyway, those are all of our FOs. Let's go on to whips now. Yeah. All righty. So what I have been kind of working on with all of my whips, I did the best I could to get something done. I won't this time be showing my Belmont card again. I did not touch her at all today. That didn't come out right. I didn't work on it at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I didn't work on that cardigan at all. Um, I, I just, with it warming up now, I just didn't feel like knitting with a really wooly wool. And so I have a feeling that that cardigan may be on a hibernation. I don't, hold on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my hair thing today. It's like really jutting out. Anyway, <laughs> looks like my little bunny ears are flat down. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I just, I think I'm gonna hold off until the fall to work on that. Um, mostly because a lot of other projects I have are actually cotton and summery things. I would like to actually get to work on those. Yeah. But the things I did get to work on, I did put some work into Brad's sleeve. So I believe last time I was way down here. I didn't put a marker. I totally spaced. Space Cadet Melissa here. I forgot. Go figure. Um, I was about down in here. And anyway, I got to where I could, let me get it a little bit closer, where I got to bind off some. And now I'm just decreasing for the shoulder. But... Same as the other sleeve, but sleeve number two is underway. I'm really hoping that... So pretty. Yeah. I love how soft it is. I love it. it. I'm really hoping that I can get it done by the end of this week and finally oh, start nice to work on the body. Yes. But again, like I said, a lot of my things I didn't really... 
mentally feel engaged enough to I, I wasn't inspired to, like to I, I it was just a bad couple of weeks I'm sorry and then I was working on this I think you got quite a ways on this so when we went to the yarn shop over in Moorhead um, Minnesota across the river from Fargo North Dakota we I took this I was working on it I was trying to get it done to where I could split everything you know, a couple days later, you know, I picked it up again. I thought I was to length, so I tried it on. And it is bottom up, so I, like, had to put it over my head, and I'm trying it on. And let's just say Luna wasn't the best of, of cats that day because she thought it would be fun to chew through the yarn. And when she did that, I just, I was done. I, you know, I had to put it away. I, she's been in timeout now. Not my cat, the project. But anyway, I did get a tiny bit of progress done. Um, I actually, I think I moved that up. I was about down here, and I did about two inches. It's just that I moved it up because I thought, oh, I'm at, you know, 19 centimeters. I only have like a centimeter to go, and I think I am going to go a bit longer. Um, I tried it oh, on yeah. at the 20, and I think it needs just like maybe four or five more centimeters. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to continue plugging away on this. Um, again, this is that um, Knit Picks Lindy chain in the color Plum. And I'm making the um, camisole number two. Yeah, camisole number two from my favorite things knitwear. And yeah, it's going to be a beautiful camisole once I finish it. I am making it slightly cropped. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. It really is cute. That one is also being currently worked on. Um, I guess I can show this one. This one's to the bunny I've been working on through, I actually have it down here, through Knitted Animal Friends. So I'm making the bunny out of this book and I've shown it before in previous episodes. But I'm working on the ear. And here's the little ear. It's kind of blowing out just a little bit. But it is so sweet. It's so cute. But I found out I'm not a huge intarsia knitting fan. So this isn't like full stranded um, color work. You're actually just working with the color in this little area. You're not carrying it across the entire band other than the brown. The brown goes all the way across because I strand it from the back. But the white, I don't know. <laughs> it's turning out okay. I know I'll have enough yarn left over that I may end up doing another ear and playing around with duplicate stitching because right now I'm not happy with the way that's pulling. I don't, this you put nice. it on, I'll try and show here. I'm not happy with the way it's pulling on the side here. See how oh, ga yeah. like gapey those, those stitches are? But then it's all unison. I know that's my tension. I know that I'm going too tight, but this side looks great. But I don't know. It's just something going on, and I don't know if it's hmm. just me, you know, being too perfectionist, because it is for a little girl. I don't think she's going to mind. No. But to me, it's like, I want it perfect. She, she won't notice, but you will. I don't know. I, I think I'll, it looks precious. I'll make up my mind at some point, but yeah, that's it's going so on. Pretty. I am working with my Chiaogu, um little shorty set, by the way. These are the size two. Um... US and also 2.75 millimeter. If anyone wants to know what needles I'm using, that's what it is. Um, Very my cute. last whip, which is a new whip, because I just, I can't help myself sometimes. It's spring and I feel like, you know, you know how they say like April showers bring May flowers. I feel like April sunshine just makes me want to cast on everything. It, I, I don't know. Beautiful cast on itis. I, I can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop, right? YOLO. I don't know what else everybody says. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. so we went to the yarn shop um, and I ended up finding some really pretty yarn. And I had to cast on one of the Musselberg, Musselberg hats. Um, it's a beautiful hat, and I'll try to put a picture of it up here. But it's just stockinette stitch, and pretty much you're making a huge tube. 
yeah. huge tube yeah. and it's a multi-gauge pattern so if anybody out there has any you know <laughs> yarns that they have or even like scrappy I think this would be good for scrappy yes. hat anything like that it multi-gauge I mean you you literally cast on and you use that as your gauge so you don't have to do a gauge swatch either right I, I kind of liked that even though I'm a big swatcher right I loved that aspect but other than that, I will show the yarn that I got for this hat mm -hmm. and the label. So pretty. So I would show the skeins of this one, but I already <coughs> caked them up and started, so I couldn't help myself. So here's, well, it's called Alpaca um, Lace by Cascade Yarns. It's 100% baby alpaca. And I know many of you may say, why are you making a hat out of baby alpaca that will stretch? Well, it's for Brad. He's going to wear it. It'll keep him really warm because alpaca fiber is hollow mm -hmm. and it, it keeps you warm. Yep. And since it is a double layered hat, it'll be nice. And you know, if it stretches out, he likes a slouchy. And right. I thought I can always add elastic too if I need to. So. Yep. I can't be bothered. I'm getting it with what I want to. <laughs> I think being double layered, I don't think yeah. it'll stretch as much. Yeah. So So here's the specs on the back, if y'all are wondering. Um, it is a 50 gram skein, and it's 437 yards, which is 400 meters on here. Um, it is a lace weight, as it says here. I'm holding it double to make it more of a fingering. It's a light fingering, but it's, it's working really well. So I'm using, so oh, I should look at the colorway for y'all. Absolutely luscious. Where is it at on here? Oh, it doesn't give a, it's only a number. Hmm. So the number is 1455. I'll put it on the screen. Um, but it's a brownish gray. It, it yeah. looks like it's like a gray that had like an overtone of brown. Like mm -hmm. it's very pretty. It's out of the natural color. It's so really here's, pretty. I'm having to stand because it's just easier to kind of get it in the camera lens area. So this is the beginning of the hat and there's a little progress keeper that I made out of a little glass mushroom from Michael's. I think I got it. So yeah, if I hold it this way, I've you got can... the red one. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a bunch of these little mushroom ones. I think they turned out so cute. But anyway, there's the beginning of the hat. Um, I'm working these. <laughs> I'm working this hat. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. <laughs> I'm knitting this stitches. hat <laughs> on size US one and a half, um, which is a 2.5 millimeter. You know, I, I'm a crazy woman sometimes, <laughs> but I'm okay with it. It'll be I, ready before fall. I, th I think so. And yeah. it's a stockinette project yeah. because I've been sitting here thinking, what? easy project do I have that I don't have to pay full attention to right. because even the tank top the pearls that I have in there I still I'm not fully comfortable looking down to do pearls because I will drop a stitch right I know I will and then I'm gonna have a headache going back and fixing it yep. but stockinette stitch I'm very comfortable knitting just a knit stitch while watching tv I'm borderline pro at it <laughs> I feel like I can sit there I remember I would have my kindle up and I would read, like physically read while just doing a knit stitch. Right. And then I would turn the page. I absolutely love doing that, but I don't have any of those projects. I haven't made any socks lately. So I right. thought this hat would be wonderful and Brad's favorite color just so happens to be orange. <laughs> so I bought this one to be the <laughs> contrasting color. So I'm gonna do half of the hat in the natural color that I have that I've already skeined up and I'm beginning. And then the second half of the hat will be this beautiful bright neon orange. So pretty. Same yarn, just different color. And this color is 1470. I'll put that on the screen as well. But yeah, I love it and it is so soft. It and is. Oh, soft. they're just, they're, they're so nice. But I figured this way, the way that I've seen pictures of the hat, you can pretty much knit it in the solid. You can do it crazy colors you, you can do half and half so I'm gonna do these ones I think that will be beautiful and then he can pick whichever he would want to be shown right. because I do know at his job he has to wear high vis colors um, so Bradley works for coca-cola 
and at their facility um, he has to wear like this bright neon yellow <laughs> jacket and shirt and stuff so I always have to make sure that's like really bright when I wash it to get the stains out oh, so he's yes. visible and so with this um, I thought it would be kind of fun because at work he could either, he could wear it either way because if he's like in a situation where he needs to be more visible he can put the orange out right or if he just wants to be kind of like I don't know Invisible. casual <laughs> when we're going out shopping he can put it this side I think it's gonna be fun anyway so yeah. that's gonna be for Brad too so y'all can see a pattern I like to knit for <laughs> I think I've turned into kind of knitting for others. Yes. I feel like. Yes. Now that I think of it, like I, I do have things that I like to knit for always. me, like tank top, things mm -hmm. like that. But a lot of the things, it's like I want to knit something for Brad That's all the time. The too. bunny I want to make for Mavis. It's like the things I want to make for it's the always boys. What does somebody else want? Exactly. So that is all of my whips right now. Um, yeah. Let's go on to you. I, your have, I, I only have one whip and it's almost finished. And I started it after the last YouTube podcast video. Yeah, it was after we went to the yarn. The yarn shop. Uh, let me see if I, I love this yarn that she bought. It's a, oh, she bought some one. really good yarn. Oh, like listen. it oh. Which I will apologize now because I know we said we would take footage inside of the place and I think the lady would have agreed to it, but guys and girls, ladies, gentlemen, everybody, everyone, y'all, I just... <laughs> there she went. She is full of it this morning. She's what? She is full of it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for my cats, but I feel like going into that shop, I was overwhelmed because I have not been in a yarn shop in over a year. It's been a minute. And seeing beautiful yarns like that, I was like, oh my gosh. I, I just, I did like two or three laps in that store. Oh, it was beautiful. So I apologize. It was that beautiful. We, you know, and then, I, you know, I just got a little social anxious and I just didn't want to intrude on her space like yeah. hey can I film in your shop especially you know? when it was the first visit maybe on a yeah. second visit and next time I think I'll email her I feel yeah. like that will be a better way for me to like get around my social anxiety a little bit um but her store was beautiful it was smaller than what I thought but it was a lot of fun going um I did get a little clip of the front of the building which I'll try and put in real quick right here because this is where pretty much the rest of the yarn that my mom got was yes. from there yes so, yeah well and i got some stuff too so we'll show that in a bit but it was a beautiful little shop of course when i went i didn't have anything planned i i just which is what i usually do i walk into a store and i'm like oh i've got a touch and smell and just everything so i walked in and well the first thing i found <laughs> was how do I say it? Yeah, there you, you go. Go, go ahead it? and show it. Yeah, go ahead and okay. show it because you'll be able to see what you're doing better. So it is, I'll try and show it. I don't know if it's Cumbria. like. I think so. That sounds about right. It's by Cumbria? the Fiber Co. Um, but it's beautiful. Yeah, Cumbria. Unto the hills. It's a blend of masham wool. Merino and mohair. Ooh. And actually, I was kind of worried about it because sometimes wool and mohair kind of can get a little mm -hmm. scratchy on me but I set the well they were in Hanks but as soon as I got back to the house I had to cake them <laughs> so we yeah. have a gray and I can't find the label to this one I don't know where it is okay so, so um this one's a really pretty like almost a smoky gray that one's really pretty. I love the halo on it so this one is a white heather. white heather it's so beautiful it's so squishy too it's... i would put this to my face but i actually have makeup on yeah, and this is white wonderful. i don't want to ruin her yeah. yarn i would cry I would too. but it is beautiful <laughs> like you can smell the sheep oh yes which is like <gasps> one of the first I things that. i do i feel the hank and then i pick up and i 
Oh, oh, just inhale. I mean, look at that. And it's at more that. teal and blue than what it shows up on the it's camera. About right there. Yeah, that's about, about the color. About right there is the color. And this is Windermere, which is funny because there's Windermere real estate in Washington. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Yep. Anyway, it's a beautiful yarn. Oh my goodness. So show them what you've been working on. Okay, so anyway, we got back to the house, and the day we went, I just, I couldn't resist caking them up. As you can see, I told Melissa, I said, I can't leave them in the hanks. They've got to be loved. Well, and she knows that I have an umbrella so, swift and winder, so yes. she's like, let's do it. <laughs> so I decided that I was going to make a cowl, or what I would almost call a neck warmer, because it's not going to, to me, the cowls kind of hang a little more, mm -hmm. so to me, this is more of a neck warmer, because it's going to be up against my husband's neck, because he gets cold, I mean, yeah, 70 degree well, weather, and he wears sweatshirts, yeah, I'm so he, shorts he does a lot tops, of walking, but... my dad is like <laughs> yes. an avid walker, like, yes, he will go 20,000 steps a day, yeah, he walks so. like Brad, like my yeah. fiance Brad, he walks a ton, but his is like work driven, but my dad, like, it's recreational. He just loves, <laughs> he loves to walk. The Find man someone loves who to walk. loves working if he's not, If he's not writing news stories, he's walking. Anyway, yeah. so I decided I had to make him a neck warmer slash cowl, and this is what's coming. I decided oh, so to do... Pretty. A, let me stretch it out a little because it'll be blocked, of course. Yeah, and it's scrunched so, up now because it's still on a cable, and it is a woolier yarn, so, so oh, it's really it's, holding it's shape. Luscious, so it kind of gets that kind of ridgy, but it's not puckering. No, like it's not a pucker effect. No. It's just the yarn being the yarn, because like the and floats. being you know like worked with. Once it soaks and blocks, it'll relax. Kind of think of your muscles when you're tight and sore. You soak in a bath. Got room. You can then see you there's a lot of room on the floats. Oh, yeah. So. It's going to be it, it, It'll be just and fine. And your floats, like, y'all, I mean, look at this. Can y'all see that? This woman, it's like, Jesus. She's good at crochet. And look at those floats. Just as pretty as her front. What the heck? It's because I worry about them. Look at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. So, anyway... Now I've, in fact, I'm just now getting to my top ribbing on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gray only, only holding one color, so it's going to go really fast. But also, um, oh yeah, I turned it in. Yeah, out. I fixed it for you. But now I've decided that he needs to have probably a teal or a gray sweater to go with this. <laughs> and then we were just talking about how maybe I have to make a hat out of what's yeah. left to match this. Yeah. So... Like Melissa said, so he can pull this to here and have the hat to here so, so he won't freeze. Yeah. Kind of like one of those um, ba balaclava, I think, but detached, not together. Because you right. all know like a right. balaclava, they, yep. some of them go up over the nose and then, you know, the hood part is to here. This would just be kind of maybe to chin yeah. if he wants to pull it up over, you know, his mouth he could. But that way he can have the hat on and he can stay warm. And then with the sweater... That's a whole outfit. He's wondering if we're talking about him. Sorry. Oh, my dad just came out for more coffee. <laughs> and so he's looking, wondering what His what ears we're were burning. About. Yeah, his ears were burning. Um, but no, that's just beautiful. I love that project. So anyway, that'll be done today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, I that's guess... That's two projects I'll have done in two weeks. Yeah. That's not You're bad. Fast. I mean... I just, I, I used to be faster at knitting, but I think now I've really slowed down and I would like to hear from y'all. Like if y'all get kind of tired of seeing the same kind of things over and over, let me know down below. Like, Hey, yeah, you know, I don't mind, you know, seeing the little bits of progress or not, whichever, because you know, I could always make this more of a monthly podcast if that would be more exciting because I do think in a month a lot more gets done because yeah. I know other podcasters do a whole month in between. I just, I personally like the little, the little videos in between to kind of, you know, I like to sit in it and, you know, watch. I like to hang out, but right. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. So just let me know down below. Um, 
Whichever you would prefer, whichever you think is more entertaining to watch. Hey everybody, so we're going to add this clip in right here into our whip section. We totally, as space cadets do, forgot to show our temp blanket. I forgot. <laughs> so I'll just um, film this real quick and then add it into here. I have an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> My age. So oh God. <laughs> I forget a lot. <laughs> So for anybody out there that doesn't know what a temperature blanket is, it's an annual blanket um, that you work on um, and it's a row every single day that you crochet or knit, whichever you prefer. We are actually crocheting these blankets. I'm doing a single crocheted moss stitch or linen stitch actually. It's a linen stitch my bad. Yes. Um, so mine's a little bit more compressed. So. <laughs> To say the least. Mine is nowhere near as long as hers. I'm only laughing because we just recently like held them up to compare. I'll try and take a picture and insert it here so y'all can see the difference. It's hilarious. It but is crazy. Anyway, um, you pretty much look at your high temperature for the day and you take your corresponding color and crochet or knit that into your blanket for that day. Yep. Um, our temperature ranges are slightly different. Um, with this blanket and this type of like, I don't know, project, I guess, you can really add as much as you want, right. especially depending on the area you live. Like there's no sense in someone who lives in, you know, the Southwest or in the South right. that has below zero temperatures like me. It's hardly ever going to happen. Exactly. I mean, it would be like, whoa, I've never seen it get below 25 in Texas I was going to say... Mm -hmm. Between Washington and Texas, I've, I myself never. personally have never seen yeah. below zero weather. Yeah. So for her, she doesn't Maybe necessarily have to teens, worry about it. Single yeah. digits, exactly. but never below zero. So for me, I added in a little bit more just so it would accommodate me. And also, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I just added a little bit extra. <laughs> so that's why you'll see where our ranges differ. So yeah. here's mine. I've shown it before. But yeah, see, here's my below zero. And honestly, <laughs> I could have probably done... A separate one that maybe went to a light yeah. purple. I think if I do it again, I will if I'm still living in this area because when it got like down to negative 25, I was like, I could have used like yeah. a lavender or exactly. something or mixed these around a little bit more. But anyway, here's mine. These are the ones I'm working with, which this week, everybody, if yes. you are returning, you know how much I've been wanting to <sighs> crochet with this mustard color. It might be coming. Your girl will get to this week. <laughs> I'll get to use it tomorrow, I think. Or yes. no. Wednesday. Isn't it tomorrow? I can't remember. Oh, maybe this the next day. This yeah. week I'll get to yep. use it. I'm really happy of about that. Of course, it's after her dad and I, I know. go. We, we brought bad weather, y'all. It's just the way it is. It started blizzard, bl blizzarding. 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 It, a blizzard started right before we were coming up and had to stay in hotels until the roads cleared. Yeah. And then it's been It's chilly. been beautiful. See, and this is so sad. So. It's literally like a week before they came. It was beautiful weather for a couple of weeks here in North Dakota. Beautiful spring weather, sunshine, just beautiful weather. And then the blizzard hit. And like they've been visiting us and it's like one whole week was like <laughs> couldn't go anywhere couldn't hardly go anywhere. at all. And, snow and, and then ice it, and... this past week, it's like... You know, we tried to get as much done as we could. Um, yeah. I'm glad we got to do the main one, which is yeah. the yarn shop. Yeah. But anyway, now it's yarn getting super nice for... again when they leave, right? Yep. Mother exactly. Nature. Yeah. Gosh. Anyway. Oh, well. Here's I did her... get to use oh. some different... I'm sorry. Oh. I did get to use some different colored yarns on my temperature blanket, which yes. has been really fun. So anyway, here is mine. They're a little wonky. I'll hold it up. But... Can you see it? Yeah. But I've gotten to use some of those um, light blue and the little bit darker blue right below it that I haven't used a whole lot of in Texas. Yeah. So I think I've almost used everything but the below 20 degrees. But I think I'll get in a little bit of that purple when I get back to Washington oh, State. Yeah. We'll get some below 20. Because y'all will be so. there and it, it'll definitely be that in um, I am excited. winter time. Yeah. That, that's one exciting thing is the, the travel between here and home mm -hmm. the next two, three days. Well, three, four days is um, 
going to be some different colors. Well, and it's so it'll be fun. fun because like for you, yours I feel like is more interesting because you're traveling, so you kind of get that memorable segments of color. Like y'all will notice, right? <laughs> like. You can see where she left Texas, <laughs> y'all. You can see it in her blanket. And then it goes from these yes, warm <laughs> colors up to these blue where she's been with oh, us. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then it'll be kind of cool whenever she gets back to Washington to see how that progresses, which we've already kind of agreed she will be sending me little pictures yes. every now and then um, just to kind of give us an update of what she's doing We've also discussed that it may be kind of fun, maybe a once a month thing, um, us doing like a Zoom um, so I can screen um, record it and then post it on with these videos um, just to kind of see what she's been Stick working on. Up. Yeah, because that way it won't just be my content, it would also be my mom's also, just every now and then. Um, and that may make just her kind of share. want to make a YouTube channel too, who knows. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's show these bad boys. Okay. So I was happy I got to put another little stitch marker to mark where mine was. You <laughs> got to switch your um, pattern. Pattern. Yeah, so you're back yeah. to the ripples for this one, right? right? Okay. Because I do every other a single crochet chevron. Yes. But every other month I do, I already explained this last one, but every other month, one month mm -hmm. is just a flat single crochet chevron. And then the next month is a single crochet chevron, but I go through the back loop only mm -hmm. to make it rippled. Yeah, so, so it's it really cool. It has a little wave and it's a texture thing. Like you can really feel the ripple. Right. And I feel like in person anyway, you see it a lot more. Like, because yeah. I remember when yeah, she showed person, me, I was yeah. like looking like, I don't you know, is that intentional? But, feel it. but when really she told cool. me, yeah, it's like once you told me what it was for, I was like, that is so smart because I... I didn't think to do that. No, I like I like yours though. So yours is smaller. Mine's going to be to cover. Oops. Cream okay. Abdul Jabbar or something. Oh, God. It's going to be twelve feet freaking so, tall. So anyway, here's mine. Oh, it's getting long. It's getting long. So there's the bottom. So as I've said before, this bottom piece here is January first, and onward. So this is February first. This marker. March. <laughs> Almost forgot. April. <laughs> and as I said last time, this is the blizzard week. <laughs> if you can see this bold blue, that is blizzard. And then instantly it warms back up. And so here we are May 1st right here. So yeah. That's pretty cool. I think it's really pretty. And so like in here, right after the blizzard, it did start warming up very slowly, which is actually a good thing. You you don't really think of that after a blizzard because we got a lot of snow. You would think you would want it to melt so fast, but you don't because that would um, potentially cause flash flooding. Right. So you want it to go slow. So I'm really glad that I have this big, thick green section so it just slightly warmed up over time. And then That's now we're getting back up. to warm. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, here's my May 1st little section. I'm really excited to use some mustard this week, and I'm really <laughs> hoping because I saw some temps. And, you know, they do they do change, so I never put it in until, like, the morning right, of. Right, um, But, yeah, it, I really hope it stays that temp so I can yeah. use it. But if not, it's fine. I know when summer comes, I'm going to be using it a ton. Yeah. I'm excited to see the red, so which you there. can see I love red. <laughs> You're gonna it get there. It is my favorite lipstick color. And if y'all are wondering, this is MAC um, liquid lipstick. I love their stuff. It is, I, I don't want to say non transferable, but I can kiss Brad on the cheek and it won't leave right. a cheek stain. Right. So he appreciates that. But anyway, I think it looks so cool. It may be easier to show it this oh, way. Oh, yeah, there you go. I just, I cannot wait to get this finished. And I've even seen some people at the end um, do tassels off of these. See, I but, thought about that. Or fringe. I should say fringe, not tassels. But oh, yeah. I've thought of it, but with my girls, they're, they're going to oh, yeah. kill it. So yeah. I've literally, I think I'm really going to do just a single crochet around the entire thing in a single color. Maybe two, depending on how wide of a bias tape. I buy or make yeah but I want to put a bias tape down on it to really just make it look finished yeah and so that's a good idea 
I think I'm just gonna do some single crochet, maybe two rows of it, just to give that extra. So when I put the bias tape down, it's covering the border that I put on and not right. the stitches that I've made for the temperatures. Yep. And then I'm even thinking of <clears throat> getting some nice like um, linen fabric and put it in a hoop, you know, and I'll take a little pencil and I'll write down like, you know, temperature blanket of 20, 22, embroider yep. it, and then I'm going to press the side seams down just so it looks yep. nice and crisp, and then I'll just whip stitch it onto the blanket just to make it look finished. I think that would be cute. I think it would look really cute. I think it would too. So I'm excited about that's that. That's a good idea. But that's my temperature blanket. Let's somehow get the ear on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so Your is it turn. time for my tulip? Because my... Blanket right now, the way I roll it to fit it into my bag, it kind of looks like a little tulip, y'all. It kind of does. It does look like a little tulip. Doesn't it look like a little tulip? <laughs> so that's Which a, is kind of funny because yeah. I live in tulip Scotty country. Valley, Washington. Yeah, tulip yeah. country of the U.S., yeah. I guess. So Washington State, um, one of the counties in Washington State is Skagit County. And near LeConnor, where my parents reside... Um, time to time there is a tulip festival um, that happens around April time and Millions I believe last I <laughs> knew it is the second largest like gathering or plantations of tulips next to Holland it's or huge. next to the Netherlands I should say yeah I don't know it's which huge. is correct but I'm not sure anyway either. but it's beautiful there are just fields beautiful. and fields of tulips so anyway, I think it's kind of cute the way you had that. It does look it like, look like a the tulip. tulips. I didn't realize it till I pulled it out today. Okay. All right, y'all. This blanket <laughs> is a beast. Okay. It is going to be about 12 feet long by the time I'm done with it. I'm going to have to tuck it under <laughs> and make a little foot, foot, p foot pocket, I guess. It'll be a foot pocket. There we go. A foot pocket. So anyway... I want to show, I think this shows, I want to show, this is January 1st, right here. Can you help me yeah, hold it up yeah. on that side? It's getting a Ooh. little heavy. I was going to say, that's heavy. Ooh. So this is January 1st right here, this orange, because we had a warm January in Texas. So as you can see, this is Texas. We got a cold day here and there, but only like one, two, three of them. And then we just had a couple more cold days here, but as we got up here... We got a little warmer, and then we got to red, which is, I think that's 77 yeah. or above for me, is the red. And then we got <laughs> to come to North Dakota. <laughs> so y'all can see the transition from Texas, Texas. and then North Dakota. <laughs> It's hilarious, but I love the colors. I thought, oh my gosh, okay. I thought this this green apple and this sky blue together was going to be just awful, but it's really kind of, yeah. I kind of like it. Yeah, and see, I don't so, think on the camera it's picking up as blue as it is. It really no, is a baby blue, a blue next to this green right here. Yeah, though. it looks more white, but yeah. it is a baby blue. Because I'm trying to think if there's a white I can hold up. <laughs> next to it but I don't no, see one. No, there's no white. I don't, I don't get cold enough for white. <laughs> Melissa gets to have white. I don't get cold enough for white. So. But I think it's beautiful. Okay. And right here, um, I'll and post a... actually... What? It was folded in half. So oh, yeah. actually, there's the width too. Yeah. So so it's, it's a nice width. It's just really long and I'll post a picture of both of ours next to each other. I don't other. know how we're going to ever get a full picture of this thing. <laughs> Honestly, y'all... It's only a single crochet, and it's I'm I'm crocheting this pretty not yeah. tight tight, but no, it's I can, not loose. I can feel the difference. Hers, I don't like, know. Why I would it's say so it's big. it's average, but it is a lot looser than mine. Yeah, mine's pretty well, darn and stiff. Yours is partially the stitch too, though. Yeah. But so, anyway, yeah. so those are our temperature blankets, y'all. Sorry that we didn't mention this in the we whip got section we got a little you know carried away um but yeah um thank you and we will continue with the episode um yeah. other than that i think we can get into our acquisitions um in this next segment which if you are not into acquisitions 
thank you so much for showing up today. Um, thank you for, you know, viewing the episode. Hopefully you can leave a like and a comment down below. I would appreciate yes. that. Subscribe as well if you haven't already. Um, if you enjoyed this content, let's hit some acquisitions if you are interested in them. Yes. And also, disclaimer, none of this is sponsored. We purchased this with yes. our own money. Yes, we did. <laughs> I just like to throw that out there because I think it, it does get a little confusing nowadays. Like, yeah. oh, is that gifted? Is it right. sponsored? Did you buy it? I I haven't... Well, I guess you kind of gifted me some yarn. Yeah, I gifted you. I mean, it. she bought me some it. yarn, but yeah. anyway. We can show it. I think it's acquisitions time. <laughs>
and I may not even have been. And that them. holly berries is pretty much right but, on a holly yeah, berry color. It's beautiful, and I'm holding it back here because the closer I get, it blows it out. Right, that's. Right. I'm just holding it here so you can see the actual color. I'll yes. hold them up closer here in a moment, but this is also palette yarn, fingering weight. Um, it's really same pretty. fiber content, same yardage. But it's beautiful and then lastly I just have one of these ones which is just a cream so it's not the the bare one it's not a stark white mm -hmm. um, but it is very creamy I, I wanted kind of a like a warmer vintage color yeah it's, it's pretty, pretty spot darn on close I was just it like, is pretty, are pretty this darn one close. I feel like is just you you can tell it's a different this animal one looks content. A little, yeah this one's a little bit yeah. almost lighter God. I love the smell They're of that. Just... This one even has a woolly okay. smell, that Peruvian high smell. level. But yeah, just a cream. It's enough smelling. <laughs> Same specs on this. But yeah, here are the colors together. And I bought two of each color. I just brought one out of each just to show because I didn't do this last time. But yeah, these are going to be for my nephews. I'm going to so make a couple pretty. of stockings. So They're I'm so probably, crispy. I know, I'm probably going to start on these um, pretty soon, probably like June yeah maybe um but yeah once I start Christmas. these I'll probably be knitting on these pretty monogamously yeah. because I'll want to get, them, get done them done in time and honestly I feel like with color work I love it it's it's obsessive mm -hmm. not obsessive it's addicting for yes. me because it's like ooh, whoops <laughs> I was rolling Almost off my lap it's like ooh. That was pretty. What's the next one going to look yes. like? And you go another round. And then you go another yep. round. It's just, oh, I That's love it. That's how I am. So I know these will fly off. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I just love them. I hope they do, too. I'm going to line the inside as well because of the floats I don't oh. want anyway. When Santa fills it, yeah. you don't want him to get I, I don't on. want, yeah, I, I think lining the inside of it will be better. Yeah. So, anyway, there's that. Um... Lastly, that I got um, just recently when we went to get, um, I think it was for your extra skein. Yes, because we yarn. did have to go back. So we made multiple trips to Hobby yep. Lobby. Yep. First time we got the shawl to make Lauren's shawl right. and then my dishcloth. The second trip, she needed another skein for her temperature, temperature blanket. blanket. And while we were there, <sighs> I can't say no to things sometimes because I saw this yarn it's really hard to kind of see the glitter in this it's God, so pretty though I don't think it's, it's showing there. the glitter at all uh, I saw the tiny bit there for half a second I may have to um, include a picture of it somehow yeah but this is yarn B highlights in the color spa and the color is pretty this is a good That's spot to spot hold on, it right yeah. here is about the color of all mm -hmm. the skeins but yeah. it is a beautiful like what would you say that is like a succulent uh, color like that's like yeah not blue but not green but it's not like a bluey green it's no, very it's succulent hard to explain it. i just i love that a color. super light honestly that would look color. so good on you because well, of your it eyes. matches my hair oh my god my but it's getting pretty gray <sighs> But it looks good. I though. like my gray hair though. I think it looks yeah. really good. My hair doesn't do well with color. Oh god. <laughs> it doesn't. So this anyway. yarn is 380 yards. It also is 79% acrylic, 20% polyamide, and 1% metallic because it does mm -hmm. have a glitter in there. Um, I wish it was popping up on the camera. Um, but it is really beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I believe I got did I get four? I think I got four skeins, and the price is four ninety nine, so like yeah, eighteen bucks after tax yeah. and stuff. So it's not bad. It's not bad, um, because what I'm gonna be making is a shawl out of this. I love shawls. Yes, I just can't you do myself. But I I saw this and already swatched for it. <laughs> I'll try and show it. So did my swatch, and the corresponding. Um, I don't know stitches or what have in the you pattern, in the pattern that, that the pattern suggested to do right. and I did even though it, oh, it smells good from my soaking but mm -hmm. even though it is acrylic and you don't really necessarily need to do a gauge swatch with acrylic right I still do just so I know like 
I'm a process knitter. I love that process of swatching, soaking, blocking, and measuring. But I like to at least swatch still. Even if I didn't soak and block it, I would want to at least make sure I had the right needle type. The right needle size. And, yeah. I mean, to go with your... Because you, yeah. you tend to be a little bit tighter knitter. So yeah. And, like, I know... Make sure it works. Oh, sorry. Um, had to readjust myself. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, but could I have gotten away with not swatching for a shawl? Yes, I could have. Could I have skipped the soaking and blocking? Yes, I could have. But did I know? Because I love to do these things. <laughs> I don't know why. This is what I had mental capacity to do. And that's what I did. That's what brought me joy, so I did it. Yep. And, you know, the shawl I'm going to be making is the Kala shawl or mm -hmm. the Kaya. I don't know because I don't know. I don't know how it should be pronounced because it's a double L, which could be a ya yeah in right. some cases, um, like tortilla. So exactly. it's like you never know, um, which I love tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't show that portion because it is with a pattern attached right. to it. So this is from my Lane magazine that I got. Um, it is issue number seven. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it. It's so tiny. Yeah, number number seven. Um, I bought this back um, in Washington, and I noticed that a couple of podcasters have made this shawl, and I've seen a couple of people do it in different yarns. And I was like, you know what? That would be a really nice shawl to have. Right. Because I don't have a shawl that's flashy, I guess. Like... A lot of them are very simple, mm -hmm. very simple, quick shawls. This one I thought would be kind of fun because it does have a texture to it, but it also has these beautiful details. I'm trying to find it, y'all. It's in here somewhere, but I'm trying to find a picture of it to show. Yeah, yeah there there's one without the pattern. So here's the shawl, and it has these beautiful... Calla lily. So maybe that is calla. Yeah. It's short calla. for calla lily, maybe. I bet. Um, I bet it is. But they just look so beautiful. And I don't have a shawl that looks like that. And I think it would be really beautiful. That's pretty. And it also has a pico um, edging, it looks like, mm -hmm. at the bottom. Yeah, that'll be really pretty. But anyway, I thought that that would look beautiful in this yarn. Just a little bit of extra. Yeah sparkly magic I don't well, know it's a real soft it is sparkle well, I mean it's not well and I also like I think another reason I don't knit with a lot of heavy heavy wools is that I do have a knitted sweater that is let lopey right that I love it is the Bertha one and I love that one but I don't wear it all that often because it has to be really cold and me right. going outside. Right. Um, but I know that we're not going to be necessarily living here the rest of our lives because we are a little slightly nomadic. We like to kind of move around and stuff. And we have been talking about the Southwest again. So yes. we may be moving to warmer climates. And in that case, I don't want necessarily woolly wools all the time. Um, right. Which this would be nice, especially because in the South, Southwest area, AC is like a must. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's just kind of a future kind of knit for me. Um, I have not casted it on yet. I've been very content with just the swatch and looking at it. It's kind of a motivation for me. Right. So it's like once I'm done with one of my whips, I know that it's like, hey girl, I'm gonna I'm gonna see you soon. That, that's <laughs> kind of what I'm seeing it as. Um, so those are pretty much all the things that I have from like last time and from going to the store here. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I have a lot of acquisitions this episode. Oh my gosh. So this finally came in, this yarn. And let me tell y'all, with, so with USPS, that's our <laughs> national postage service. And a blizzard. And a blizzard. It finally came in, but then I got a note in my mailbox 
that said that it needed, it required a signature for this parcel. And I was like, I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I ended up having to wait a whole nother day to receive this yarn. And <laughs> any of you that know, like, yarn and like oh. getting packages and love it and you know because there are two different hobbies there are knitting and hoarding acquiring. Of, yeah acquiring, acquiring of yarn not hoarding I yes mean, acquiring <laughs> acquiring of yarn I mm. kind of fall into that a little bit but everything I get has a purpose still oh, acquiring. but it finally came in and this is the cut the caton caton mm -hmm. yarn I believe I said that I right. That's right by Lana Grossa and this is so all for pretty. the bunnies outfit. They're so I'm pretty. I'm so excited. So I can't wait to see the bunny in the bunny outfit. So the orange will be for little carrots along the cardigan for the bunny I'm making for Mavis and just everything else. Oh my gosh. It's going to be so I'm cute. I'm so excited. But anyway. So, so cute. All of these beauties finally came in. Very springy. I'm yep. so excited. And they are very they are soft. Sweet. So I'll go through the colors real fast if they have a color. I think it's just numbers on here. Really? No I think online. Carrot. I think. <laughs> uh, I think online they had color names, but on here it just says number thirty-nine for this one. Carrot top. The green. <laughs> Carrot top. <laughs> it should be, and this one's twenty-three. Um, this one is a pale pink. Um, I hope that it's coming up on camera. It's about right there. Yeah, a I pale pink. This is number 51. We have a uh, baby blue that is 78. I don't think baby blue is its name or pale pink. It's just kind of the colors I think it look, resembles. It's a kind of a skyish blue. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. But again, 78 for this one. And then the last two are the same. They're just an off-white, like an um, and it's maybe. yeah, like an eggshell maybe. Yeah, yeah. And it's twenty-eight, number twenty-eight for I the like color. The sheen to them. They've yeah. got just a little bit of They're a sheen. They're beautiful. They they, they do. They They're really, really do. They're beautiful. Just a tiny bit. And it's a soft cotton. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah, is very which is nice. going to be nice. Mm -hmm. I love it. Absolutely love it. Tougher I think cottons. the reason it feels like that is because it is mercerized. Oh yeah, that's why it's got mm -hmm. the sheen to it too. Yep. Yeah, it's really so, pretty. There's that that came in. That was the last of my yarn orders online. I need a sip of coffee. Sorry, all this talking. Oh, that is so pleasant. It's pleasant. Oh, I love that. Okay, lastly, in my basket, which I got this basket in Washington um, from, it was like a little stand on the road, mm -hmm. Snow Goose, it's called, and they have wonderful ice cream oh, during the boy, summer, they. and they hook you up. Like, yes. you buy it, and it's, it's like the size, of, the your size of your head. It's enough to, like, literally share with, like, multiple people. Yes. Um, but if you're like me, someone who loves sweets, you eat the whole thing to yourself. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is just wonderful. It's one of the fair trade baskets. Um, it used to have a label on the inside, but it, I'm sorry if it literally wore off from how much I've used this. Yes. It was on here at the bottom, right here, or on the side, I should say, and bottom it just wore handle, off. Yeah. But this is pretty much everything that I got from the yarn shop. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I have... A ton of these that I did not buy. These were already in my stash. This is Malagri Malagrino. Oh my <laughs> god. What shoot. Try again. Malabrigo? Yes. Does that sound correct? These are Malabrigo. Um, so in the pretty. silky merino base. It's a single ply. And the Piedris? Piedris? Mm -hmm. Piedris um, colorway. And it's this beautiful, like, color of like autumnals like you have some purples yellows it's blowing it's out quite a bit right there looks good yeah then you have some darker greens yellows it's really just pretty all of those colors it's just absolutely beautiful there's actually some teals mm -hmm. in here pulling back like you can maybe see some teals in that color also 
but with these since they they have a dye lot right so you can read on the label they have a dye lot but they do vary right a lot a lot like yeah, those ones are all the do. same this one has a lot more orange yep. in it you can really so you see, can the, see difference. the difference same dye lot, but way more orange and yellow mm -hmm. in here this has way more blue and green so my plan is I will be alternating these um, just slightly because they all resemble each other. It is something for me. I will wear it regardless. Right, right. But I will do that just for a peace of mind because I've been there before with um, a Madeline Tosh yarn that I made a cardigan out of and it was very tonal. It looked very you saturated and then very un like sun bleached. Right. It just was not my jam, I never wear it because of that. So I know that I will just alternate, yeah. alternate. But I am going to pair it with this beautiful silk mohair from Rowan. And the color is very spot on back here. So every time I bring it up close, it blows out. So it is about right there. Mm-hmm. And it's beautiful. I don't know if it has a color name. Why are these people giving them color names? Burnt Caramel. There we go. Burnt Caramel. Mm hmm And it is absolutely beautiful. It is. It is 230 yards for 25 grams. And I got five? Yeah. The fifth one is down there. I am going to pair it with this yarn. Mm hmm I have not swatched it yet because I, I'm enjoying looking at it for now <laughs> um, because I need to reel myself back because I've been casting on a ton of things yes and I want to at least finish the tank top then I'll cast on the shawl and then I think I'll swatch for this sweater which the sweater I'm wanting to make is by Tristan Molina of Dragon Horde yarn right I think that's how it is she is the designer behind the everyday slouchy beanie which I've made so many of those oh, and I, yes. I love the pattern. Yes. But she has a sweater um, that is in the DK weight, um, um, Sanderson. So it's a Sanderson, that's the name of it, Sanderson. I'll put it up here so you can see it. But it is an absolute beautiful textured sweater that I think would just look so perfect for fall. And I think I'm going to look like an apple cider. <laughs> cupcake <laughs> or donut in this sweater with this yarn combination so I'm gonna give that a go It'll um be pretty yeah it's gonna be really pretty. I think it's gonna be gorgeous because I originally bought all these skeins I think I have like 11 I counted because I was working on a stole wrap right but I just lost <clears throat> just enjoyment with it it was beautiful but I just, I lost interest in yeah. it, so I just it left it in storage, like, on a cable, right? What? You know how many times I've bought more cables because they've been on a, a work in progress <sighs> or something that needed to be frogged, oh, but yes. I just can't deal? Well, like, three years later, I'm now dealing with that. So I've ripped <laughs> it out. I've reskained everything. That was, like, a whole day <laughs> thing because there were tangles oh, and knots oh, everywhere. Gosh. So that's out of the way. Um, that'll be that project. Yes. The other thing I bought from the shop was this orange I showed earlier. I won't go into more detail about that. I've already shown and talked about it. Yeah. And then, so this was 50% off, right? Your budgeting girl had to jump on this because I do love watermelon also. Oh, I, boy. I love it. <laughs> so, I saw these socks by Regia. And they knit up. It's blowing out, but they knit up to look like watermelon slices. It's so cute. So in each of like the pinky red area, you get these little specks of black like seeds, which yep. that is the best kind of watermelon. You cannot change my mind on that. <laughs> Seeded watermelon sense. is the only way to enjoy yep. watermelon. It's Grandpa way sweeter. It. Yep. it just tastes so much better than the seedless. It has no flavor. Yep. Like, why? Why? I just know. I'd rather work and have the flavor. Just know. I can't. I can't. It's not worth it. Gotta have seeds. Um, but yeah, that skein was 50% off, which it originally was nineteen ninety, so I paid half of that. Yes. Which I loved. Um, 
And then I got this yarn. It's so pretty. I cannot pronounce this. It is by, um, oh gosh, Chopelle. Is that what it I is? I guess that's Chopelle. Mm -hmm. um, or Zauber Balls. Um, so it's like that, but it's not yeah. the like wooly, wooly one. Right. This one is slightly different. It is 75% superwash. Yeah, that's it. It's not. It's got superwash. Yeah, it's superwash. That's yeah. the difference in the feeling. 25% um, polyamide. And yeah. See, superwash yeah, works good it. with your dad, though, because he wears his socks like crazy. Yep. So here is the skein I got. It is. I've never bought one of these brands, oh, which. You could see, like, this wasn't a very cheap skein of yarn, but um, <laughs> it's twenty six twenty five US, so that is pretty pricey for me to pay. So I will justify all of the things in this basket. <laughs> like, the mohair, I will say, was $15.50 a skein. The alpaca lace was, I don't know if it has a tag. Oh, no, because it was brand new. She just got it. Oh, yes, she took that it. right out of the sack. But I want to say they were, like, the packaging 12 I think or yeah, 14 something like that so even though I I went a whole year without paying for I would classify this as like natural fiber type of you know not even that but like quality yarns like I love all of my acrylics and cottons like mm -hmm. that from you know the big box stores I I love that because it does help my budget, but by doing that consistently throughout the year, it has helped me save the money right. to be able to have a one day splurge like this out really of an entire it. year. Yeah. yeah really and everything I get online too, like the <clears throat> um, Lana Grossa, mm -hmm. you know, I still like that is so inexpensive versus all the other options I could find. Right. I do my best um, to find what works best for me, my project. Um, at the time and budget. So exactly. anyway, this is my splurge for the year. So exactly. <laughs> anyway, um, this is the yarn. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to make Brad some socks out of this. Um, I know I still have the rustic cabin colorway, um, but I love that color from the knit picks that I need to make him. But I think these may come first. They're so pretty. They're so pretty. And the colors are spot on back here. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of socks I'm going to make for him so yet, pretty. but I have a feeling it's probably just going to be like knit three, pearl one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, other than that, first thing I picked up was actually this yarn. I walked in the shop and I saw this and I thought it was beautiful. It is beautiful. Um, so it is um, Sestari. Um, Sheep and Wool Company. I'm assuming I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry if I didn't. So it is called, yeah, and it's um, Ash Lawn Collection. And it is 75% Virginia grown cotton here in the U.S. And then 25% American raised merino wool. Um, it says raised by us in Virginia and ranchers in Wyoming. So this is Very a 100% cool. um, United States, you know, Raised, produced skein of yarn. That's cool. I think it is beautiful. It is a DK weight yarn. It was $14 for this skein. It is in the color Timber Wolf Gray. It's and it's about 250 yards for 100 grams. It is absolutely beautiful. You can actually maybe see their website. I don't know if you can see that or not. If not, I will put it on the screen right now. But um, yeah, it's absolutely scrumptious for a cotton. It is. I, I love that. And wool blend. It's so yeah. nice. So I bought two of these, which this is the first time I've gone yarn shopping where I didn't just buy one yes. skein. I saw yes. it and I was like, you know what? I need at least two. I just felt like I was yeah. at like one of those sports events where you have the big inflatable clappers. Yes. <laughs> so if you know what, what I mean, about. it's like, yep. it just yep. reminded me of that. I'm sorry. That's cute. That's where my mind goes. But no, I, I just, I've never bought just enough to make 
something. Exactly. And so I bought two, and I'm thinking I may make a bralette out of it. Um, It'll be pretty. Maybe do that. I don't know. Um, if I end up deciding that I'll want a tank top, I can always like knit the body up to a certain length and then get on their website and buy a different color if I yep. need, or contact the shop owner that I went to and get a different color and make it two-toned. Um, because I doubt that the colorway would be the same. Right. And I mean, maybe I can do that. I don't know. I yeah. would rather have a high contrast if that's yeah. the case. Anyway, that's all that I purchased, but my mom bought me this set of yarn because I mentioned how I wanted to make an anchor's tea um, by pretty. Petite Knit. And I'll put that up on the screen as well and link it down below. It's gonna be so pretty. But we got, or well, <laughs> she got me five skeins of this yarn by Barocco. It is modern cotton. And it is absolutely beautiful. Um, the specs on this, and this yarn, I would say, is actually pretty darn affordable. It is $10 Ten bucks for a skein. A skein. Yep. That's not bad. That is not a bad price for this, especially when you're getting 209 yards. Yep. I feel like that's nice. Um, that's less than a dollar than a yep. yard. I mean, that's cheap. That's nice. That's yep. definitely doable. And it's 60% um, cotton. Pima cotton mm -hmm. and 40% um, modal rayon. Hmm. I like rayon. Anyway. That's why it's got a little bit of a yeah, shine. Yeah, and it's so oh, soft. Yeah. But I think that color is going to be gorgeous for an anchor's tee. Yeah, that'll be I so pretty. I think it's going to be gorgeous. Other than that, that's all of my acquisitions. Um, mom's time. I have just a tiny bit. Of course, we already saw the. Cumbria, I Cumbria. believe it is, yeah. the, the neck warmer yarn that that I could not leave the store without. I have a habit of when I walk into a yarn shop, I go to the softest thing I can see, and I touch it, and I smell it, which is what I did with this. <laughs> and then I leave it. And this is an alpaca classic by Rowan. It's 25 grams, 131 yards. Oh, that's beautiful. Is that about the color? Yeah, that's definitely about the color. It's a sapphire blue. Have I got that? Yeah, it's right it's side beautiful. up. beautiful. There it goes. Gosh, it's so it's pretty. Just, it's almost the same color even up close. God, that's Look gorgeous. That. Anyway, and so I touched it, I smelled it, and then mm -hmm. I just left it hanging on the wall for a while. And it was the last thing I ended up going back to pick up. <laughs> And because it had to come home with me, but if I took this one, I had to take its twin. So, <laughs> take its twin. So, so I had to get two. They oh. were nine ninety five each. It's not. It's bad. called Eclipse, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, I live by Eclipse. Forks, That's so if you know Twilight, Eclipse yeah. is one of the books. Such a good series anyway, to read. So, and the only thing about it, it's it's alpaca. And cotton, it says mm -hmm. super fine alpaca and Ooh. cotton. I can't see. Oh, it's a Where's blown it yarn. That explains it. So the tube here is cotton, and when it's made, they blow alpaca fibers in it. I don't That's see. That's beautiful. What are you looking um, for? Just how much of each of it it is. Let me see. I don't see a percentage of each. Oh, she covered up. Did she cover it up? The label, the, oh, the sticky. Okay. Is it covered up on the same one, yeah, same spot? Yeah, I bet. So, yeah, yeah, it's right there. Did. You may be able to pull it off. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, hey, oh, hey. Oh. I think we got. Oh, oh yeah. 50, okay, fifty-seven percent alpaca, forty-three percent of the cotton. That's nice. But anyway, it's, it's very it's, light. It's beautiful. For 131 yards, 25 grams, that's light. That is beautiful. It, it is very light. And what are you gonna make out of it? Do you have any ideas, or just like? Enjoying looking at it. It's an acquisition. It. Like looking at the view is nice too. You don't <laughs> always have to, you know, go sailing on the water to enjoy the view of an ocean. <laughs> That's how I see it. It's the same with yours. <laughs> Sometimes I just, it's only $9.95 each. That's okay, not Okay, so a bad if I price. just want to sit and feel it, I know. Every now no and then. Me. Every I now and then. Like yeah, I, I can. But anyway. <laughs> If I do something with it, or when, I'll say when, not if, but when I do something, I'm thinking fingerless gloves with like a... That'd be beautiful. Either a twisted 
I don't know. You know what you could Maybe do? Maybe cables or... If you wanted to do something but still stick with just like stockinette, you could get thicker like glass beads and a crochet beads hook. Beads would be cute. And do like a beaded motif on the yeah, top part. That'd that would be, be cute beautiful. too. Oh my so God. anyway, that one was a want, but then aren't they always a want? I know. So, although his neck warmer's in need, but this <laughs> is definitely a want. It was a spoil me. Anyway, I'll quit smelling my yarn. God, it smells so I, good, y'all. I will say one of my favorite so things to do with yarn is to smell it. Oh. I love a good sheepy wool. Oh, I God. love a good sheepy wool. That's the one thing I miss with acrylic. They need to come out with a yeah. spray that smells oh like yes. Well, if you soak oh. your or use like a eucalyptus. Like I know yeah. this is probably not necessary, like I've said before, with mm -hmm. acrylic yarns. But if you do use that, you kind of get does. that same. It, it does feel at the end, at clean, least for a process knitter. Clean I smell. really enjoy that. Yeah, this one is gorgeous. Okay, and then this one, I I saw it. It's by Plymouth Yarn. And it's seventy percent baby alpaca. You guys are gonna see kind of a. <laughs> A theme. A theme with me. I, I kind of like. <laughs> I, I love alpaca. I always have, always will. Their faces Smells amazing. and their coats. Beautiful. But anyway, this one is baby alpaca, 70%, 30% bamboo. It is. I'll show you. Of course I had to cake it. Okay, I can't leave it in that little hank it comes in. I think Viento? it's Viento. But it is just beautiful. This one's a teal Viento. color. Yeah, I think that's is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. It's a right. beautiful teal color, and it looks like it's a chain ply. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's so really, it's really pretty. pretty. I don't know if we can see that or not. It's like, yeah, you can a little bit. Oh yeah, you can. You enough. can see how it's chained. Yeah. It's beautiful, and it's almost like heathered a bit. Yeah, it does it have a tiny depth. bit of a it, It's a beautiful to it. color with depth. It's not it's just, just a flat color. It has. Soft that little bit luscious. of you know it's just amazing intrigue and it's this intrigue. one i think <laughs> i'm gonna feel it and stuff for a while i think it's probably gonna be fingerless gloves or yeah a hat i could do a hat with cabling i think a cable with that that would be pretty because there's two of course again mm -hmm. i have to bite in twins and so my mom also, like, so. with all of these yarns, when we got home, she's like, I don't know if I should cast on or, or <sighs> wait and be able to show the hanks and stuff. And I just got to a point where we kind of thought about it, like maybe mm -hmm. doing a little separate video for all of this. But then I was like, you know, we see people on podcasts all the time showing yes. just the cake. And honestly, I wanted her to have fun. Like, if she wants to knit with the yarn she bought, she should be able to, right? So I was like, yeah, it just cast been, it on. It's, everyone will enjoy it anyway. It would have been a very long week. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you finish that shawl so fast. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a very so, long week. Yeah, that's all but, the um, knitting. But that's all. All the knitting. Yeah. That's all you have for that's all I have. this stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yep, because um, I finished stuff up. So. Yeah. I think all that I have left to show, it's non-knitting related completely, but... I do have to share these because I love cooking. That is one of my favorite little things, which she'll say oh. I've cooked dinners yes. like every night they've been here. I think it's been there's amazing. only been like three nights I didn't have to cook mm -hmm. because we went out. Oh no. Four. Four nights. Twice yep. we went out to eat and then oh, my I'm chicken so spaghetti. Sorry. I looked down at Lily and her bed I know, and she like, has an eye she's open so watching. She's so cute though. Look at her. She's such an angel. Anyway, two nights we went out to eat. One night my mom cooked, and then last night Brad cooked, mm -hmm. which he made um, a pasta au limon, and it, it was, was so good. good. It is my favorite dish that he makes. It's I asked good. for it on my birthday. I, I love it. Oh my gosh. Ah. Anyway, I made garlic bread to go with it, but it was good. I'll get to that in a second. Anyway, I love cooking, and my mom brought me these. They're little wooden, like tongs. Tongs. These are fabulous for bacon. Let me tell you, if you like to make bacon or something like that, it's, it's so nice to have. Oh my gosh. And they're so pretty. And they come in handy for like all types of things I've mm -hmm. noticed. Like anytime I need just like a little bit of something that maybe for some reason I can't get with my chopsticks or whatever yep. when I'm cooking, this is nice. And some of my pots and pans are the nonstick and so all of my chopsticks are metal. 
and so I don't want to scratch the pans. So these are a great alternative to help me be able to get those things. But I love it for bacon. That is what I've used it the most with lately. Yes. Um, yesterday I got to use it with my roasted garlic that I made. That worked really good. Um, which my mom got me a garlic roaster. I'm so happy about this show. It is so nice to have this. I used it yesterday. Um, I prepped some garlic um, with some olive oil it's and so then good. some seasonings. Oh, oh my gosh, I roasted them in there. Um, and if any of you don't have a garlic roaster, they're really simple to use. Um, like on the box that I, you know, got mm -hmm. from you, like you gave it to me. Um, it's like you soak the lid for about 10 minutes in water, submerge it, and then you pretty much just like, once it's ready to go, you know, you, you can leave it in the water. At that time, you pretty much cut the top off of your garlic, so each of the garlic bulbs are showing, or garlic, are they cloves? Cloves, yeah. Cloves of garlic are showing, and you drizzle the olive oil on there, and I mean, be generous with it. <laughs> I, like, I didn't like dump it, it wasn't like, submerged in right. it but it was like two or three tablespoons right. of it and then you put some salt on there I use some kosher salt I like thick salt on it and then I put on just a bunch of seasonings once that's in there you put the lid on wet and then you put it in a cold oven put it in your oven cold yes. and then I brought it up to 425 degrees Fahrenheit for like 40 something minutes I want to say 40 or 45 minutes yeah but you always want to put terracotta into your <clears throat> oven, like at least with the dome wet, but in a cold oven because once so it raises it in crack. temperature, it doesn't crack it. Mm -hmm. If you put it into a preheated oven, it will crack and your money is wasted. Yes, um, and there's a mess. Yeah, and so pretty much what happened is I took a loaf of bread and I cut it in half um, all lengthwise. Um, and then I had both halves like this and I took my butter and I creamed it and then I added in a little bit more salt, um, the roasted garlic cloves in there, um, which I actually chopped those a little bit finer and then put them into the butter with some seasonings like some oregano, mm -hmm. um, thyme, um, basil, I think I put a little bit of basil in there, That's some other so things. Good. And then, Did you say how you use these? Oh yeah, and when I got them out of the the garlic out of the roaster. It was still a little hot for me to touch, but I was running short on time. Brad's pasta was almost done. I had to get this into the oven. <laughs> so I took the bulb and I put it in here and I just squished and slid them out That's and it awesome. worked wonderful. Um, so anyway. It's perfect. Perfect utensil to have just in case, you know. Um, but yeah, it turned out wonderful. I mm -hmm. spread the butter mix onto the garlic bread. I sandwiched it shut again so both wet sides with the butter were close together. And then I wrapped it in a little bit of foil and I left the center a little bit open for steam. And I put it into the oven, I think at 350 yeah. degrees. And yeah, I did really that for good. like 15 minutes, I think, I think total. It was 15 total, minutes. Yeah, it was I think you did it 10 perfect. and then another five. Perfect. So we had that for yes, dinner. That was good. And then last purchase that I made um, at the, um, what was that place? Store. The kitchen store. Is that the name of it? Just yeah. the kitchen store. I got one of these Swedish <clears throat> dishcloths. Um, they're supposed to replace paper towels up to 20 rolls, I believe. Mm -hmm. I have four, no, three others. I have like, I, I just, I love these. Yeah, and this one cool. has a kitty cat. So I have one that has a sheep on it too. Yeah. And then two other ones that have like quotes or something. But I just, I love the kitty. I had to get it. So cute. Um, but no, these are wonderful when you're cleaning or wiping things up because they dry real nice. And I have a little clip with a hook that I hang just on my little pegboard oh, yeah. above the sink so it dries. Um, but yeah, they're wonderful, eco-friendly. And I know they say up to 20 rolls, but really mine still work. And I know I've used them a lot. Lots. And when I clean this, I just put it in my dishwasher. And it comes out wet, you just wring it out and dry it again. But... Those are some of the kitchen cleaning things that I had that I wanted to share because I thought they were cool. Yeah, they are cool. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, that is it for today. 
it was so good seeing all of you. Appreciate you coming back. Um, definitely give this video a like and subscribe down below and <laughs> leave us a comment. I love talking to you guys. It's so nice. I, I love it's hearing cool from all of you. Yeah, and it really made her feel good yeah. after the first video. She was really nervous and just getting all of that love and feedback from y'all. Thank you so much. She loved it. I would read it to her because we were grocery shopping a lot. And I'd be like, oh, like this person's a da 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 yep. da 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 You know, it was just so sweet. So thank you guys so much. Um, we and somebody it. else even understood my fish out of water. Yeah, <laughs> a couple of people did. They they agreed. I would say majority of everyone that commented agreed with her. <laughs> Pulling out of the Pulling center. Pulling from the center. Yep. Oh my gosh. I just can't do. I just can't. <laughs> but Too funny. I, I don't know. I, I just have to be in the mood, I guess. I yeah. just I feel like every time I've tried pulling from the center, I get yarn barf everywhere. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> so it's it's not I worth it for me. It. And what I do when I pull from the outside, I don't think I really mentioned it last time, mm -hmm. is most of the time I cake it up on my ball winder. Yeah. That way it's at least in a little, yep. you know, like like this exactly. like that's what I did then I pull from like, the outside I sometimes pull from the outside of these but yep. with this I know it's a lot drapier so it's gonna start tangling up and flopping around exactly where I like to cake it and then I pull from the outside that exactly. is just the easier way for me to do it um if it's off a skein though yeah. I can't do it but I will outside. say also pulling from the center of a cake is easy for me too it's just that once I get more than halfway done with it, it starts the to sides collapse. tend to collapse, yeah. and it's like... That's why I pull from the outside on yeah. the cake. Yeah. It's like eating the frosting. Oh, I love outside. frosting. But <laughs> anyway, do. yeah. Thank you guys so okay. much. Um, I will see you in another couple of weeks. So every other week is when I post a new video. Um, sadly, my mom won't be in the next one. Oh, no. Um, I'm very happy I managed to not cry <laughs> during this episode. Um, I know no I'll be crying a lot tomorrow. Yep. But, no um, tears till tomorrow. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it. I know we both do all yeah. of your love. Um, and let me know if you like this new setup too. Um, this is just in my living room. Um, I can easily film out here as well if you would like, but I kind of like by the oh people are walking down the hall yes they are sorry but <laughs> anyway again we've got to hit the road and do some fun stuff before yes. they leave thank you so much all right bye, bye. Some girls want to go home with grandma and grandpa, <laughs> and they don't realize that they have to stay with mommy and daddy. Sweet babies. Oh, sweet babies. Well, Luna's off to grandma. So curious. So curious of what grandma's doing. Lily is getting comfy in the wagon. 
Hi, honey. Sweet. What an angel. My little one. <laughs>